Look what I've got myself into this time. One of my uh, fr good long-term friends, uh, since fourth grade, in fact, just gave me his old stereo. He says it doesn't work. Um, when you turn the volume knob, it really doesn't do anything, and sometimes it'll crank up all the way and uh, blow the speakers. Well, not really, but it gets really loud. But you can't turn it down from the uh, volume control knob, but the remote control works just fine. And he got this in 1999, brand new. I think I have a theory as to what might be wrong. There are two potentiometers here. One controls the CD jog mechanism, and of course the other one is volume. This is the jog one, I believe, and then this is the volume. This board is actually upside down. It goes in just like that. Um, because the remote control works, I don't think there's anything wrong with the digital circuitry. This is really good because I have a an AV receiver at work that has the exact same problem, and it's from the exact same time period. So I'm hoping my theory is right, and it's just the potentiometer. Alright, I don't know if this fixed the problem yet, but if it did, this is how you fix your Iowa stereo system. Um, it seems to be very common in the late 90s, mid to late 90s, early 2000 era Iowas. Here is the volume control potentiometer. Actually, it's not a potentiometer at all. It is a... If you notice, it has one outer contact ring and one inner slotted contact ring. The outer contact ring appears to be a ground. The inner contact ring appears to be... Well, it'll have... Let's see... We have one, two, three fingers, and one ground right there. And basically all it does is it senses pulses. It's really, that's really all it is. It just senses pulses. And how it senses the direction of the pulses is beyond me. I really don't know how that works. But what I can tell you is that these fingers were all kind of crushed down a little bit. This was full of, um, you know, just dirt. Because after all, I mean, over time, this will, this copper, or I'm sorry, yeah, this copper will break down and get mixed in with the, the grease that they use. And, of course, that can trick the computer into thinking it's either turning in one direction but not the other, or, you know, or it's not sensing the pulses at all. And that's really how it works. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and put this back together. I'm going to put some dielectric grease in there, and I might not even, I'm not even going to do that. It'll be fine without it. Just put it back together and see what it does. Sometimes you completely miss the mark, but sometimes you hit the nail on the head, and I think this time I finally got it. Because, as you can see, the volume control is moving exactly as it's supposed to, Now, the symptom of this failure is you can move the knob, either it doesn't do anything at all, or it moves sporadically, or the numbers will jump. It'll go from, let's say, 10 or 8, to 15, to 1, to 5, or it'll go in the wrong direction. In this case, no matter what direction I turned the knob, it would still go up, and it would, it would work very sporadically. But after cleaning the contacts and, and um, bending the, the, the contact uh, strips themselves upwards to basically force them against the wheel, or in this case the rotating wheel, um, and removing all of the uh, metal fragments and sediment, whatever it was in there, um, and then reassembling the switch, that actually fixed the problem. So, I got a perfectly good stereo for minimal work. Now, the reason I actually like this stereo is because of the convenience factor. Even though it's nowhere near the quality of my 1978 Onkyo, it's, it's just convenient. It's an all-in-one packaged unit. 
with four speakers, a remote, three disc CD cassette, all in one. To me, because I don't listen to loud music, is worth more than that on Q is. Um, but I'm, I'm going to hang on to it and maybe use it somewhere else maybe uh, at some point, I don't know. But anyway, it's a decent little system, bookshelf stereo. Nobody makes a good bookshelf stereo anymore. Not even this nice, which is hard to believe. So that's it for now. I'm going to put this thing back together after cleaning it up and uh, enjoy some tunes. Until then. All right. Got all the exterior components in the dishwasher ready to be washed. This whole thing is completely disassembled. Here is the amplifier and heatsink. I can't believe how minimalist that is. I mean, there's like nothing there. Why well, have it? Anyway. Um, the little tiny transformer that runs it. And there's the CD player. There's the cassette mechanism, which I've got to completely clean up. The heads are absolutely... It's like they've never... I don't think this ever has been used. I mean, these heads are so dusty. So... I'm going to throw it on. Cool dry if your dishwasher has that option. There we go. Okay, we've got it all reassembled. I know the uh, plastic panels were successfully washed in the dishwasher. And we got rid of the cigarette smoke odor. Um, that was my primary reason for using the dishwasher because all that heat and detergent really helps clean up the uh, if there's any tobacco odors or anything like that. But the cassette decks are all cleaned, uh, plastics are cleaned, connectors, cables, I clean those off. All the dust, I clean the, uh, the dust and whatever was in the bottom pan. It's almost ready to go. Okay, and she's repaired. Check out all those LEDs. I'm going to turn the lights down as you can see what it looks like. I always thought that was kind of cool. But here's a good example of a system that is all glitz and glamour and no substance to back it up. The sound is flat at best, even with the surround speakers hooked up. It just... There's no real bass. And I've got the, the T bass option turned all the way up. You know, it's so flat and tinny sounding, I can't believe it. This is a really cool jog feature. This is a Jethro Tull CD that I've had for several years now. Roots to Branches, great album. But there's just no substance in... in, in Look at how it changes disc. I think this one can be opened while it's playing. Nope. Let's see. Ooh, orbital. And I think you can do that from the remote too. I cleaned up the remote, it cleaned up very nicely. Can you eject? Let's see, I'll do a direct play for disc 2. I mean, really, the only reason I like this system is because it's so compact and convenient. It's all in one unit. The tape cassette deck is all automatic. I can switch to the cassette deck from the remote, and it automatically selects which tape to use. If both are occupied, you can select between 1 and 2. But in this case, only 1, so I'm going to press play. Ooh. Fast forward. It's pretty cool. 